You know what's funny? Doug funny. You know what's not funny? The story of how Doug went from Nickelodeon to Disney. They were very happy with it and on paper everything looked great. But the fans of Doug didn't seem to think so. Today we're going to take a look at how Disney was able to get the Doug franchise from Nickelodeon and how they changed the show overall that led to the death of Doug. Oh, no, they didn't kill him or anything. His show was just canceled. So maybe kind of the same thing. Either way, Doug was a pretty interesting show. It was a slice of life look into Doug Funny. His friendships, family, pork chop, daydreaming, the beats, and Mr. Dink. On the surface, compared to all the other shows on at the same time when it premiered on Nickelodeon in 1991, and being honest with you, it didn't really stand out. I mean, it premiered on the same day as both the Rugrats and the Ren and Stimpy show, marking these as the first three Nicktoons to exist. The other two shows took more of the spotlight for people to really attach onto. But Doug did have its following. It wasn't as zany and over the top like Ren and Stimpy, nor was adventurous as the Rugrats. It was just uh, chill. It created a vibe that I think really goes under the radar, especially when looking back at shows, movies, heck, even music that fits a certain mood. It's easy for the flashiness of something to be the thing that gets remembered, but when you can reflect on those in-between moments of at one point being in the now, you may just find something you cherish in a whole different way. And that's how I feel about Doug. So let's break down what led Disney to acquire Doug and how they fundamentally changed it. Summarize what Doug as a show is, is pretty simple. It follows Doug in his adolescence navigating everyday challenges one would face at that age. Boom, print it, ship it, Bob's your uncle. How do you know my uncle? That's not important. What is important is first understanding Doug's relationship with Nickelodeon before Disney came to Homewreck. First, let's start with Jim Jenkins. Hey, I'm Jim Jenkins, creator of Disney's Doug. He worked as an actor on some earlier Nickelodeon projects like Hocus Focus and Pinwheel. He established a nice relationship with Nickelodeon for a good while and took some time after a bit to work for Children's Television Workshop, or as we know it today as Sesame Workshop. But beyond all of that, in between his working commercials and advertising, he would create doodles of a boy and his dog that in fact would actually incorporate into his commercial work. These characters would be the blueprint for both Doug and his dog Porkchop. He would later take these designs and retool them for a book he made titled Doug Got a New Pair of Shoes. After the book, Jim took his doodles to the animation space. Creating a pilot for Doug is a show titled Doug Can't Dance, in which going back to his old buddies at Nickelodeon, they were interested and purchased it. And wow, this pilot did extremely well in testing, beating out other test results from other pilots at the network during this time. So Jim said, hey, why don't I just make a studio? It won't be this massive mammoth of a company, but we want it to look larger than it is to really leave an impression. So Jumbo Pictures was born in the summer of 1990 and was settled in New York. Now producing Doug for Nickelodeon where it found success premiering with two other cartoons, sorry, Nicktoons, that would all become popular in their own rights, with Rugrats clearly being the breadwinner for Nickelodeon until a yellow dish cleaning apparatus would take its place. From 1991 to 1994, Doug would span four seasons for a total of 52 episodes, with almost every episode being divided to have two segments per one episode. Aside from this, after wrapping on Doug, they would work on a Nick Jr. show called Allegra's Window. Yes like the allergy medicine, except it followed a young girl named Allegra through her daily life, doing whatever, I don't know, I never watched it. But I don't want to just brush over this whole after wrapping on Doug thing I just said, as there is more to it than that. Originally, Doug was ordered for 65 episodes, very similar to the Golden Disney number that they love so much. But after four seasons of 13 episodes each, and only ever hitting 52 of that 65, the next season of 13 was declined by Nickelodeon to continue, not because of the rate ratings, or at least as far as we know any major problems behind the scenes, but for the fact that the show itself cost a pretty penny to produce at Nickelodeon, especially as they were dealing with an apparent budget freeze. But here is the overall thing. When it comes to Jumbo Pictures, they held the rights to their properties they were making, meaning if there would be a split from Nickelodeon or the current contract ends, stuff like Doug would still be owned by Jumbo. Nickelodeon themselves had a deal with Jumbo though where they would have two years after the end of production on 
Doug to reverse their decision and move forward with the show again so they wouldn't be able to do anything with this property until that decision time has ended. During this time, however, they were being poached by other networks and they were using it as leverage to push Nickelodeon into hurrying their decision to greenlight the fifth season of Doug. This is a common business tactic that can both work or fall back in your face depending on your perceived overall value to the company you're dealing with. In this case, it's a bit of both. You've got his name. Doug. 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 Turn it up. Doug's back. It's now 1996, and the two-year window is coming to a close for Nickelodeon to make a decision. It really felt more like they were being strung along for the sake of just squatting on the IP, rather than Nick truly feeling like they were hard at work thinking about what they want to do with Doug. Clearly, the leverage angle did not work, and once the timer of waiting came to an end, ABC, who had been trying to poach them, was purchased by the one and only Walt Disney Company. And Disney wanted to follow through with going after Jumbo Pictures. This multi-million dollar deal wouldn't just be for Doug, of course. I'm coming back for everything. But mainly they just wanted Doug. This deal would be far more lucrative from the jump giving Jumbo Pictures a five-year contract, stock options, executive roles, and access to executive bathrooms. <laughs> the Disney difference. Beyond this, Disney would purchase the trademark of Doug so that all future merchandise sales would solely go to them and not have to be shared in any sort of way. They did, however, let Nickelodeon keep the rights to the four seasons of Doug prior that were made for them and still use them to their discretion. This is where the real change began for Doug. So now in 1996, Doug would be making its big comeback later in the year. The first big thing that happened was that the work on Doug would be transferred from New York to Los Angeles. This would set up some problems like rather than the voice actors being in studio together to record, they would now be doing so privately and remotely. This is a dynamic that can greatly impact the authenticity of a performance without directly having the others in the cast to bounce off of. Billy West, famous for every voice you've ever heard, did not return to voice Doug himself as well as Roger, as he had done so in the original show. For Disney, Billy West was too famous and too expensive at this point. We like to look at Disney now and be like, oh, you got money, like money, money, but they are a business and have to calculate if it's worth the price for something many shows already do sometimes, and that's changing some voice actors. Disney themselves had a lot riding on Doug. It was a roll of the dice in order to see if the fan base would still be there with the addition of having to tune in to a new network to watch it. But to their credit, they did come out swinging with 65 episodes over the next few years from 1996 to 1999 for three full seasons, beating out the amount of episodes episodes the original show had. And even more stuff after that, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Right off the bat, things were different. For one, Doug now would be full episode length stories, rather than two shorter segments to fill in a full episode's runtime. With Doug already being at a chill pace at a shorter runtime, the problem the show faced with fans, and me personally, is that it felt a lot slower to make it through an episode. Sure, stories can be more fleshed out and more time can be given to character interactions, but something just feels off. Another thing you'd immediately notice is the title. When first being on ABC after the acquisition, the show before being known as Disney's Doug went by brand spanking new Doug, which has to be in the top 10 greatest ways to say, hey look, we did it better. Come over here to our channel now and watch this. You don't want that gross stinky Doug. You want this immaculate brand spanking new Doug. Well, I appreciate the confidence. It's very hard to get past your own personal nostalgia. It's almost inherent that I myself, who loves the Nickelodeon Doug will instantly shun away what Disney had to offer with the property. But I also feel justified in those opinions because Disney didn't just change a few things here or there, it breaks down to the core fundamentals of the show itself. Let's talk about the characters. The thing that the original show did so well and spent so much time making each character feel like a real character. Doug himself, for the most part, is the same, perhaps a bit more questiony of things in the world in his direct life, but a Aside from a few slight details being different in his character design, 
he's pretty much the same. But let's also talk about Connie, a more side character from the original show, but just as unique apart from anyone else, where she was drawn to be a bit more heavyset. But Disney reintroduces her as this. Yeah, okay, sure, but it's really the explanation why that makes it weird, and that's because in the show they explain that she went to a makeover camp over the summer, which is, uh, well, no pun intended, carries more weight than what it feels like on the surface level. Patty Mayonnaise also got a new look. You know everyone had to change their hairstyles over the summer? Come on, they gotta stay hip with it. I just said hip with it. I'm old. Right, Skeeter? Give it up! There's Cleopatra. Oh, sorry. Cleopatra Dirtbike, Doug and Judy's new baby sister. Don't worry, one of those names I just said is a nickname. You can figure that one out. Roger is now th rich. I'm rich. It all honestly feels like Disney wanted to change so many little details to separate the two versions of the show. But instead, these, what I guess they thought were little details, really transitioned the characters we knew and loved into the exact opposite. I neither know them nor love them. But what about BB? BB bluffs so rich she can't afford to change. Hey buddy, think <laughs> That's me. <laughs> oh, man. There's even the music. The original Doug theme song was a work of art. Okay, sorry, let me not be so dramatic with my wording. It was a solid intro theme that had a fun rhythm as opposed to the new Doug theme song where it's uh well it's all over the place. It feels less like the chill, catchy vibes from the OG, and more like a scattered mess of various instruments and sounds. In short, I do not like it. Also, The Beats, the best non-band band to ever exist. If you disagree, you're wrong. Don't at me, didn't ask. They deleted them from existence. Well, they forced them to break up. Now we'll never see them again. I need more love tonight. Killer Tofu! <clears throat> Sorry. It does feel like the show went out of its way in the first episode to explain every little change and how to deal with and understand the things changed. It's that rather than going with the flow, it felt like the show was trying too hard to make you forget the original show and dismiss it as the old, as we need to be in with the new show. Just accept it and move forward. Hey, sometimes advice like that can apply nicely in real life, but here it feels like it's not in favor of the show's experience, but more in favor of the company's pettiness to mess around with things, especially things that don't need to be messed around with. Or maybe I'm just an adult who can't let go about pointless cartoon politics. Who's to say? But to give credit where credit is due, the show used themes of change throughout its entire series run on Disney from 1996 to 1999 for seasons 5 to 7. With the final episode ending the journey Doug has taken in his time here so far in Bluffington, with the completion of his journal and and the start of his new one. We even see him getting asked out by Patty and the beginning of puberty for him, ending the show itself on a rather nice bookend, closing this chapter in Doug's life and at the same time ours as well. Now, everything behind the scenes wasn't all sunshines and rainbows though. All of the changes made to the show under Disney had original Doug staff members claiming that this new Doug was inferior to the original Doug. Jim was not as involved as he once was in the production of the Disney Disney version, and at some point he was even quoted as saying, I mostly agree with Doug fans who think the original 104 11 minute Doug stories made for Nick were the best. Now, before the show would wrap up in June of 99, Disney would release Doug's first movie. And his only movie. At least when Pokemon did it, they were confident. Like, really confident. Doug's first movie revolves around a monster in a lake, a corporate cover-up, friendship, love, pollution, and a whole bunch of questions about the direction the film took. The film was reviewed pretty poorly, citing script issues and bad character development. A lot of other problems most many find in the new version of the show in general carried over from that into the film. But there was some good sprinkled in there that even I can't deny. It's not awful, but it's not great. And in reality, that's a fair way to consolidate my thoughts from this 
video to a TLDR, or I guess a TLDW? But aside from the remaining episodes that premiered for a few months past this film's release, this would be the finale to Doug, I guess. The show's ending, though, was a lot better, but hey, that's just me. Disney was not done just there, though. Oh, no, no, no. They needed to make this property more worth the value they paid. So on top of the show and the movie, we also got a video game for the Game Boy Color titled Disney's Doug, Doug's Big Game. And when you hear the original title of Doug, Quail Man to the Rescue, you just see how even more stupid this name is. Anyways, the game was your standard fare for tie-in handheld-based video games. You walk around familiar show-based environments, speak to the characters you know and love, and then... Wait, yo, hold up. This is dope. You could, you could fly around the screen for boss fight. Yo, this is sick. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm just sick. That's too much motion. Uh, to be fair to the game, the Quail Man boss fight segments are, are pretty cool. Oh, also, Disney ran a stage show at Disney World from 1999 to 2001 called Doug Live. It was a musical, and it was about Doug. Oh my, it's the beats. Cool. Well, that's how Disney changed Doug. They still own the rights to the show as of today, and sadly, they have no plans to do any sort of revival for it. But in a day and age where everything is coming back after many years, I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted another exclusive series to Disney+. Plus. Hey, maybe even Doug can get his second movie. Who knows? But what I want to know is your thoughts on Doug in general, and which version do you prefer? Nickelodeon's original Doug or Disney's Doug? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, later.